Welcome back to the Daily D, and today we are making my car the caramel sauce I make. Now, this isn't like a what well, if you heat it up, you it can become pourable, but this is more of a thicker spreadable sauce. So you can top cupcakes with it, you can put it inside of cakes, um, you can decorate with it, uh, make candy with it, that kind of thing. So it's not like the uh you know the caramel topping you throw on ice cream that you get in the bottle so this one's thicker so um the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put in that's one cup of butter um you can use salted or unsalted all i have right now is salted and you're going to put it on like medium low and you're going to let that um melt now if you have a heavier pot um i have like a lighter set and then the um heavier uh pot they work best when you're dealing with things like candy and that okay and to this i am going to add two cups of brown sugar now all if you have if you know, um, you can use light brown or dark brown sugar, whatever you have. I've used both. And you're just going to kind of keep moving your butter along the bottom to melt it. You don't want anything to stick. And as you can see, the sugar's getting darker. It's the sugar starting to melt. The butter's continuing to melt. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in one cup of corn syrup. Now you could put in the white corn syrup, but where I live, it's really pricey. So um, I'm just using the golden corn syrup. And I'm going to mix that up again. As you can see my butter is starting to melt a little more. So I kind of add my ingredients one at a time. I think you could just throw them in if you wanted to, but I prefer to add them individually and then mix them up as the butter melts. Okay, the next thing I'm going to put in is one can of sweetened condensed milk. So this is a very rich sauce. I've um, decorated the top of cheesecakes with this. Um, if I wanted to drizzle it, I've actually just put it in the microwave to warm it up a bit. And once it's warm, um, it becomes something you can drizzle over things. And um, it is so good. You'll find yourself with the leftovers going into uh, the fridge with a spoon. Which sounds terrible, but hey, it's so good, this stuff. getting all these wonderful ingredients blended and you're going to want to watch the sides of your pot um, you don't want too much to sit on the top because that may crystallize and then be kind kind of grainy in your caramel sauce and and that will won't really affect the flavor just maybe the texture a bit so just kind of try and keep that wiped down I'll be using a spatula to do that in a minute. Okay, so after that I'm going to put in three tablespoons of whipping cream. This is 35% cream, 
Um, I'm not sure how it is in the States, but here we call it whipping cream, but it might be um, called heavy cream or 35% cream in the States. Now, as you can see, these are a lot of like really rich, heavy ingredients. Um, when I make a caramel cheesecake, I actually just cut down on the amount of sugar I put in it. And I will use this caramel sauce to flavor it rather than use an artificial caramel flavoring. And it makes all the difference in the world. And then I will put um, a layer of the caramel once the cheesecake is uh, cold and set I will put a poor layer of the caramel sauce on top of it and it's to die for and I'm actually uh, making this caramel sauce because I am making a cheesecake. My birthday's coming up in a couple of days. So, um, traditional around here, we usually, since we all love cheesecake so much, we tend to make cheesecakes for everybody's birthdays. Usually, um, and so I'm going to be making one using the caramel sauce. Now I'm just going to continue letting this cook. As you can see the butter's not quite melted, but I'm going to take my spatula and just wipe down the sides to avoid any crystallization, but I don't like mixing it with the spatula. I tend to like a wooden spoon because I've had spatulas kind of get damaged in it and then you don't want to eat the caramel sauce because you think there might be like plastic remnants in it or something. So you're just going to keep mixing this around. You want to make sure nothing sticks to the bottom of this. As you can see it's just this beautiful color. And you're going to wait until this gets to a boil. And I'm going to come back in just a couple of minutes once it gets to a boil and we'll continue from there. So as you can see, I've been kind of wiping down the sides. This is just starting to boil. I'm going to leave it there for a second. As you can see, it's starting to boil now. So I'm just going to stir this slowly so it doesn't um, stick to the bottom. And I am going to set a timer for three minutes. Now, for those of you who like to use a candy thermometer, you're going to make this uh, wait until this reaches 238 on a candy thermometer. And once it reaches 238, you're going to take it off the heat. I'm showing the method without the candy thermometer. And as you can see, it's a rolling boil. So even while I'm um, stirring it, it's still boiling. And you just want to keep stirring it the entire time and making sure it's not sticking to the sides or the bottom. And you want to make sure that your temperature isn't too hot. You're going to be doing this like right now on a low temperature. And this is very hot. So be really careful when you're doing this. Hot sugar is like... You can severely burn yourself, so you want to make sure to be careful as you're stirring not to um, splash yourself or anything. And I wish you could smell this, the smell of this incredible caramel sauce. And I love this because if you want to somehow drizzle it, 
you can just reheat it in the um, in the microwave because once it once this is done you're going to be putting it in the fridge and it's going to get really really thick where you need like you need to scoop it out with a spoon but if you bring it down to room temperature it get it's a spreadable consistency or you can help it along by just putting it in the microwave for a little bit and then you can pour it over cheesecake dip the top of cupcakes in it and we've got about uh, 40 more seconds to go here. And as soon as this is done, you're going to remove it immediately from the heat. And I would suggest having your vanilla and your salt ready. So you don't have to stop and go back to it and sometimes when you put the salt and vinegar uh, salt and um, vanilla in it can uh, rise up a little bit so be wary of that okay timer is done I am removing this immediately from the heat just gonna stir it for a second to make sure that nothing's sticking to it I'm going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to put in one teaspoon of vanilla. Let's see how it foamed up a little bit as I, not much, but I just wanted you to be aware because it is so hot. Okay, the caramel sauce is done, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it sit and cool down. As it cools down, it's going to thicken. Once it's cool, you can spread it on. Um, you, you don't want it to be hot when you put it on a cake or anything like that. You want it to be almost room temperature or just slightly above. You'll be able to tell. Um, as it cools, um, it'll get thicker, and you can always take a little spoon and have a taste to see, or use a candy thermometer to see if it's cool enough, at which time you can um, dip the top of cupcakes in it, you can put it in between layers of a cake, or when once it gets to almost room temperature, you can... Uh, pour it on top of a cake or a cheesecake. And so um, I this has to be stored in the fridge. And I usually put it in um, whatever I'm not using, any leftovers. I put it in a mason jar and I usually only keep it for about a week. It's not a huge amount, so... Um, should be kind of easy to use it up in a week especially if you know around the holidays or something and another thing you can do is you can put this um like in a warmer a chocolate warmer or um a fondue thing with a candle under it to just keep it slightly warm so it's nice and um spread like uh kind of like liquidy and not too thick uh, but not hot and then you can um, serve this on nights that you have like a chocolate fondue you can have the caramel sauce along with that um, which is great at parties or something like that have a fondue thing where you have cheese fondue chocolate fondue and then you have this caramel sauce to uh, drip um, to put cookies in or um, strawberries and fruit and pieces of apple okay so I am going to show you once I'm ready to start and use this how it looks
We are back. The caramel sauce has cooled down. This is the state. This is um, when I would, it's just slightly warm. And this is when I would uh, dip things in it or I would spread it on something. As you can see, it's, it's actually quite thick. And it's going to get a little thicker as it cools. And then when it... Um, it's in the fridge, it becomes very thicker, like almost spoon sliceable. Um, Jesse, what can you describe how? Well, it's really thick, so it's, um, but at this state, it's perfect. When, when it is really thick from coming out of the fridge, say you've topped cupcakes with it or cheesecake, it's not going to be hard. You're going to be able to eat it. And then as it, if it gets to room temperature, it'll soften up a bit, but it's not going to like fall off your cake and get all liquidy. So it's a perfect sauce for that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to get the rest of our videos. And don't forget to check out our recipes playlist. We have all of our recipes in there. Um, some really great ones, family favorites we have in there. So be sure to check them out. And until next time, happy cooking and believe in yourself. You're capable of doing everything.